Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, friends, family from all over Canada, Terrace, and from what I believe, various parts of the world. Isn't it amazing how we can all just come together and celebrate our awesome and amazing and our good God? So I just want to invite every one of you, those that have linked in, to enjoy our great God this morning. Glad that you've connected with us. We're looking forward just to to meeting in the throne room of heaven, in the courts of heaven. So I want to share just briefly some of the exciting things that have happened this week. A beautiful young lady, uh, Megan and Jeremy's daughter, Brooke, had her eighth birthday uh, this year, or this, this week actually, and this year. But happy birthday, Brooke. I know that you had a great day because you've got a family and people that love you. Happy birthday. And also today, Linda Tanner celebrates maybe more than eight, eight years. But happy birthday, Linda. Trust Woo! you have a wonderful day as well. <laughs> Just by way of reminder, Daryl Hansen continues to host the, the journaling and the, the reading through the Bible. That takes place every single Sunday morning from the hours of 9 until 10. Please feel free to either contact Daryl or myself. You will need a Zoom link um, as it is on, online. Uh, support groups up are up and running. Choose Hope takes place this evening, and that's from 6 until 7. And so I want to invite you to join Gerhardt and Maria Kerner um, as they take us through the dynamics, sometimes challenging, of media and hope. That will be discussed this evening. We had so much fun last week, and I highly recommend joining us in these absolutely amazing sessions. Um, See you tonight, 6 until 7. Oh yes, there will be spiced milk and yummy brownies on offer. Can't wait. Our soul care group continues on Wednesday evenings. The time for this group is from 7 o'clock until 8 o'clock. Please join us on Wednesday as we discuss some practical elements on deliverance. Just a reminder again as well that our tithes and offerings can be deposited directly um, into, our, into our bank account. Um, and Kyle will, will have the link right at the end of the service. For those of you that are, are, um, are interested in, in doing it that way, that's great. For those of you that would prefer to come in and, and drop off your check, the offices or the office hours are between 9 and 12. Come in, drop off your check. Why don't you join me for a quick cup of coffee or tea as well while you're doing that? I want to also just remind you that um, it is our custom, it is normally our custom to celebrate the Lord's Supper on the first Sunday of, of every month. Um, we're celebrating the Lord's Supper next week. It will be the second Sunday. But we, yeah, there's, there's a couple of reasons, but we, we're going to be celebrating next week. So if I can just ask you to get your emblems ready for next week, that's great. Last, but uh, probably least, rem- just a friendly reminder as well. Next Sunday, we spring forward. Please adjust your clocks. Don't want, to, don't want you to miss out on anything exciting happening. But next Sunday... For those of you at 2 a.m. Sunday morning, the time will change. We spring forward. Aren't you excited? Can't wait for summer. Come on, summer. All right, dear friends, have fun. Slade and his awesome team. It's good to have Jeremy and Jacob join us this morning as well as part of the team. Have fun, Slade. God be glorified. Amen. Amen. We just want to welcome everybody in the terrace around our nation, around the world to join with us. We look forward to just worshiping our God this morning. So wherever you are, if you can, how about standing to your feet and just uh, just enjoying the presence of God. You know, where two or three are gathered, and uh, but even by uh, live streaming, you're with us. So we, we know the Lord is with us. So let's just come into a time of worship. Hallelujah, we want to worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We exalt you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
We want to praise your name. We want to give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. You are the King of kings. Come and worship, Lord. We want to worship you. Make your presence known here this morning, Lord, around the world, God. Let people know that they're not alone, Lord, but that you're there with them, Jesus. Hallelujah. We want to just take this time to honor our God through worshiping and preparing our hearts like soil to receive the seed of the word as it comes forward. Hallelujah. Well, praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Well, hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. Yes, Lord, we long for you. Right from the top again. Hallelujah. Well, praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn Yes, Lord, well, hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you, we long for you, when we see you we find strength to face the day, and in your presence all our fears are washed away, washed away.
Yes, Lord, we just want to thank you, God. It's your name that we are lifting up, God. We exalt your name today, God. It's at your name, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that you are God. Hallelujah. At your name, the mountains shake and crumble. At your name, the oceans roar and tumble. At your name, angels will bow, the earth will rejoice, your people cry out. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, your name is filling all the skies with endless praise and Yahweh, Yahweh, we like to shout your name, oh Lord, right from the top. At your name, the mountains shake and crumble. At your name, the oceans roar and tumble. At your name, angels will bow, the earth will rejoice, your people cry out. Yes, Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling all the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we like to shout your name, oh Lord. At your name, the morning breaks in glory. At your name, creation sings your story. At your name, angels will bow, the earth will rejoice, your people cry out. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling all the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. There is no one like our God, we will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God, we will sing, we will sing. There's no one like our God, we will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God, we will sing, we will sing. There's no one like our God, we will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God, we will sing. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name. We love to shout your name, oh Lord, Lord of all the earth. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling all the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. Coming out now. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. You came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Right from the top. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along. Amen. And put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing that's And grace 
Please won't find me again Oh, there's nothing Turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the You turn graves into gardens You turn bones into armies You turn seas into highways You're the only one who can You're the only one who can Oh, there's nothing I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along, yes you did, and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there is nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing that's better than you. Of course, again. Oh, there's nothing. What a time to just praise our God and just worship Him. We could just come to Him, Lord. One of the beauties living in our nation is that we're not restricted to just worshiping our God. It's, we can come anytime and just worship Him. And we want to encourage you this morning, wherever you are, just get lost in the kingdom. Get lost in the King. Allow yourself, your spirit, just to rise and, and just flow into what, all that God has for you. Come, now is the time to worship. Yes. Come, now is the time to worship.
just as you are.
touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here.
Yes, Lord, that is who you are. You are the miracle worker, the promise keeper. Lord, light in the darkness. That is who you are. Well, good morning again, dear friends. It's quite amazing. I love, I love ice cream. Ice cream to me is just, it's just the best. It's even best, better than jelly tots for those of you who know what jelly tots is. But there's nothing better than ice cream with chocolate sauce on the top. And Jacob, it was good having you on drums this morning. It was the chocolate sauce on the top. <laughs> it really was good. I was following a couple of the comments on Facebook. And for those of you that said hi and I didn't get to you, I'm so sorry. I got lost in worship. But every now and again, I went and had a look at some of the comments. And some people were asking, is that Jacob on drums? Yes, Auntie Vicky, it is Jacob. Your Jacob on drums. <laughs> Woke up this morning, most beautiful day in Terrace. Sun was shining. I'd almost forgotten what the sun looks like in this place, eh? But the sun was shining. What a beautiful day. But you know what? Even if the sun wasn't shining, it would still be a beautiful day. This morning I want to speak about uncommon courage, uncommon courage, and I'm sure that every country has many stories to tell of courage, people that are brave, and this morning I want to start off recalling a story which took place in South Africa many years ago, I think even before slaves days, that's how long ago. But on the morning of 1st of June, 1773, which is mid-winter in the Southern Hemisphere, a ship named the De Jonge Thomas was driven ashore in a gale onto a sandbar at the mouth of the Salt River in Table Bay. Many lives were lost as the ship began to break up but a substantial number of survivors were left clinging to the hull. The sinking ship was not too far from dry land and many sailors attempted to, to swim ashore. Many of those who did so perished. The water was bitterly cold and the current just too great. So except for the strongest swimmers, those who headed for the shore were carried out to sea. A crowd of spectators soon gathered on the beach. Some had come to watch. Others had come to maybe help. And yet there were still others hoping to, to loot the cargo that was being washed ashore. This is where the story gets interesting. A detachment of soldiers was in attendance to keep order among the spectators. Corporal Christian Ludwig Voltamada, not really a British name, is it? But the youngest son of the elderly Vorot was among those standing guard. As daylight came, Vorot left his home on horseback, taking provisions to his son. And as he reached the, the beach, Vorot was filled with pity for the sailors marooned aboard the ship or aboard the wreck. Seeing that nothing could or would be done by those on the beach, he mounted his horse, Funk, and urged the animal into the sea. As they approached the wreck, Vorot turned the horse and called for two men to jump into the sea and grasp the horse's tail. After a moment of hesitation, two men threw themselves into the water and did so. Whereupon Voltamada urged the horse forward and he dragged them back to shore. Vorot drove out seven times, bringing back 14 men. By this time, 
he and his horse were exhausted. But at that moment, as they were resting, the ship began to break up and collapse. Vorat once again urged his horse into the water, but by now the desperation among the sailors was tremendous. Seeing this as probably their last chance to escape before the ship was destroyed, six men plunged into the sea, grabbing at the horse. Their weight was too much for the exhausted steed. And they all dragged below the waves and drowned. Vortemada's body was found the next day, but sadly the horse was never found. Of the 191 souls on board, only 53 survived. And of those, 14 were saved by Vortemada. It's a wonderful story of bravery, of guts, of courage. And as a kid at going to school, we were often taught these stories of hope, these stories of bravery, these stories of, of some of those that have gone before us, and what it means, just what courage actually is. And like I said, every single country have got their heroes, those that displayed Uncommon courage. Uncommon courage is one of the most powerful attributes to have in your life because it determines not only your future and your destiny, but it has a great impact to those around you as well. And so this morning, I want to share about a couple of aspects on courage. Many of you will know that the source of our courage is not based in our in our ability to learn how to be brave or to grin and bear it or maybe just to bite the bullet. Not quite like that. Our uncommon courage is based purely in and through the Lord. Many times your courage will be realized just in pure and simple obedience to God. Joshua 1 verse 8 says, this is my command. You hear what I just said? This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Trust in the truth of his promise. God's promises are unchanging. I haven't counted, but I believe that there's over 3,500 promises in the scripture. God's got us covered. Wherever you go, whatever you do, whatever you say, God's got it covered. Second Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20 says, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken through each one of us, confirming the promises of God. My dear friends, not in conclusion, but I want to say that God is with you. Being with Jesus seems to be the catalyst for courage all the way throughout Scripture. Without Jesus, I don't believe it's possible to have courage. Acts 4 verse 13 says, When they saw the courage... When they saw the courage, you can see courage, dear friends. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. <laughs> you can tell if someone's been with Jesus. It's clear. If I jump into the, into the lake, you can see that I've jumped into the lake. Why? Because I'm dripping wet. And if I jump into the lake now, you'll see because I'll be shaking. <laughs> when they saw the courage of Peter and John, they saw that they'd been with Jesus, my dear friends. And you know why we can take courage? Because Jesus never leaves us and he never forsakes us. I'm going to say that more than once today. 
Deuteronomy 31 verse 6, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave or forsake you. He is there for the asking. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 and 33, make a note of that, dear friends. Take courage. Jesus spoke these words to Peter when Jesus came across, he was surfing the waves, wasn't he? Maybe he wasn't surfing. Maybe Jesus was just walking on the, on the waves. And he comes up there and he says to Peter, take courage. So this story has been ridiculed by skeptics and scoffers. I can't understand that. You see, mankind, mankind believes that we got to the moon. <clears throat> I believe we got to the moon as well. But yet we can't believe that Jesus walked on water. <clears throat> I don't have any trouble believing that Jesus actually walked on water. And I know that what God is teaching us in this story is that we too can walk on water. We are to be unsinkable saints in the midst of the storms of life. And it's amazing as I look into this passage in verse 14 in particular, Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side. Jesus, the omniscient son of God, knows all things. And yet Jesus, knowing that a storm was brewing, it hadn't quite happened yet, it was brewing, he tells those that he loves and those that trust him implicitly to get into the boat. He knows that these Dear friends of his would be involved in huge turmoil. And yet he deliberately compels them to get into the boat and go to the other side. <clears throat> I think in modern day language, this is probably what happened. Jesus probably looks at his friends and says, Hey buds, I need to spend some chill time with my dad. So I'm going to go to my, my safe place. Up in the mountain somewhere, my happy place, and I'm going to pray. You guys go ahead. I'll catch up with you a little later. That's how I understand that story. Jesus needed to spend some time with the Father. That's true. But you know what else is taking place here? Jesus needed to teach his disciples a very valuable lesson. Sometimes it takes a storm to teach us some valuable lessons. So Jesus, knowing that a storm was brewing, compels his disciples to head into the, the very teeth of the storm. He wanted to teach a lesson. Isn't that amazing? I found that Jesus often gives us a test first <laughs> and then the lesson afterwards. I'm used to things the other way around, actually. So this morning, and over the course of, who knows, maybe the next couple of weeks, I want to spend some time talking about why God, why Jesus, why the Holy Spirit plays so much importance on courage. Courage, the Bible teaches that courage comes from doing things that are right. In other words, to be obedient. 1 Chronicles chapter 22 and verse 13 says, Then you will prosper. If you take care to fulfill the statutes and the judgments with which the Lord charged Moses concerning Israel, be strong and courageous. Do not fear nor be dismayed. Can you see the link? As a little boy, I needed to check my boundaries on a constant basis. Maybe that's just a very polite way of saying that I was a naughty little brat. <clears throat> 
It's not that I didn't know the difference between right and wrong. I knew exactly what is right and wrong. I knew what is expected. The problem was that I always chose to do the opposite. Well, that had some consequences which my, my butt didn't really appreciate. It meant that I'd have a close encounter with the rod of correction. Strange as it may seem, once I'd done something wrong, I knew exactly what the rewards of my actions would be. And yeah, it did bug me. It nagged at me. It nagged at my conscience. I knew that I would be punished, and I knew full well that I deserved some sort of punishment. I knew that. But I equally knew that when I did something right, <clears throat> or when I took the initiative to do something which was maybe not expected of me, but I was going over and above, I knew that it would create something, a positive effect in, in me. My parents were amazing in their love and in their grace. And I admire them for that. I have had the pleasure of raising two kids, <coughs> Siobhan and Kyle. They were pretty easy kids to raise. My dear mom and dad had their work cut out with me. But the point that I'm making is when we have done right, we do not have a nagging or a guilty conscience in the back of our heads saying that we deserve punishment or that we deserve to fail or that we deserve the wrath of somebody. How can you be courageous when you've got those thoughts in your mind? How can you be courageous when you have the calamity or disaster in the back of your head? I don't think that you can. That's why the scripture says, you will prosper if you take care to fulfill the statutes and judgments with which the Lord charged Moses. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear, do not be dismayed. The scripture teaches that courageous strength comes from waiting on God. Psalm 27 verse 14, my dear friend, says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait on the Lord, I say, wait on the Lord. To wait on the Lord doesn't mean to sit down and, and chill like sitting at a bus stop or a train station waiting for the bus to arrive. No, wait on the Lord means focus your attention on him. Look to God to give you a solution to the problem. Apply that which God has promised you and told you and apply that into your situation. To wait on God is to find out what is God's plan for the situation. That's what it is to wait on God. <clears throat> the Bible teaches us that courage comes from Hope in the Lord. The Bible also teaches us that courage comes from having people that encourage us. Isn't that awesome? Maria Kerner posted some posted an amazing an amazing picture on, on the Terrace Alliance Facebook page this week. It says, Courage is contagious. When a brave man takes a stand, the spines of others are often stiffened. I like that. In Isaiah 41 verse 6, everyone helped his neighbor and said to his brother, be of good courage. <coughs> so we think that that's obvious, that's easy. But you know what the, if you go into the context of Isaiah 41, the whole earth was trembling. The whole earth, the Bible says, was full of fear. But as we grow 
But we will grow courageous when we encourage each other. The word encourage means to basically flip open my skull, figuratively, and pour in courage. Encourage. It's to fill me with courage. That's what encouragement is. Pour into my heart. Pour into each other's heart. Be encouraged, my dear friends. What type of people do you have around you? Cynical and pessimistic people will drain you of your courage. But you know what? Confident, faithful people will encourage you. I'm not saying that there are times where you're going to be full of courage. Sometimes you won't be. If you have a look at all the scriptures where it talks about having courage, etc., not once does the scripture say, don't worry about that issue. It's not a risk. Don't worry about the water. It's, it's not that dangerous. It doesn't address that. The scripture seems to think that there is fear. There's validity in that. But there's a higher level. There's a higher purpose. And so what I'm saying, when you look for people around you, don't look for people that offer no hope, no encouragement. And if they are like that, why don't you open up their, flip up their minds and pour encouragement to them, pour courage into their lives. The Bible teaches us to take courage from the fact that God never leaves or forsakes us. I said I'd say that again and again. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. He is there for the asking. You are not alone. I can't stress it enough. We're living in a, I believe, I can't, I can't already believe that we've been in this COVID thing for, for over a year already. And the thing which I hear from every single <clears throat> person that has been struggling with COVID is this isolation. I'm by myself. I'm alone. You're not alone. The Lord is there. But I encourage each one of us, and I encourage myself, I encourage each, each one of you, my dear friends, Press in to the Lord. Allow the Lord to nurture that relationship with him. A lot of you are probably thinking, Steve, aren't you going to read the Joshua scripture? Yep, I am. Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? I look at Slade because he encourages me and we encourage each other on a regular basis with this scripture. Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. (laughs) For the Lord is with you wherever you go. With God, you can. You can face your fear. You are not alone. You have someone who is a lot bigger than you. Someone who can take care of your problem. Sometimes, You will need to take care of your problem with your God right next to you, with your God equipping you, with your God giving you a sense of of courage and strength and hope. I relayed the story earlier on about Vorod Voltamada. He was filled with courage. cost him his life, but it changed the lives of 14 other men who he was able to save. It started off with, I think the number was 191 souls on board. He said, well, he didn't really do too much. He did a lot of, to those mommies and daddies and daughters and sons and families of those 14 men that he saved. I want to leave you with some final thoughts on being courageous. And I'll leave you with this scripture If you have listened to some of the scriptures that I've read and you say, well, I don't have courage. I get that. I understand that. But I'm going to leave you the scripture now that if 
this doesn't put courage in your heart, nothing will put courage in your heart. Romans 8 verse 31, speaking of God's everlasting love for you. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Do you know that God is for you? Do you have this assurance in your heart? Not just here. Yeah, I'm sure God is for me. Yeah, it makes sense. No, this absolute unwavering belief in my heart. God is for me. If you have a personal relationship with Jesus, you will know that that is true. Maybe in some of our insecurities, when, when some of the wheels have come off, we start questioning that. And I want to remind you, if God is for you, who can be against you? No one. No one. There is a way to know beyond a shadow of doubt that God is with you, that he's for you. And it comes, for those of you that haven't experienced it yet, it comes from having a personal relationship with Jesus. Not just knowing him in a casual way, but having an intimate knowledge, relationship, friendship with Jesus. If you don't know Jesus as your personal savior, or if you've never started a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus, you can do that now, and I encourage you to do that. It will change your life. I want to leave a couple of challenges as I conclude. Joshua had to overcome some personal challenges, some personal disappointments, some personal insecurities to operate in the uncommon courage that God had for him. Can you relate to some of these things? Are there some things in your life that you need uncommon courage for? Peter, and I say this not tongue-in-cheek, Peter, the great and the mighty Peter, walked on water. Peter walked on water. What caused him to lose his courage? Why did he start drinking water? Can you remember a time where you had uncommon courage and suddenly you lost it? You had it one moment and the next minute, gone. Uncommon courage begins a lot closer to home than what you think. It begins in our personal lives. It begins in the things closest to our heart. It begins in your, your deepest fears, the things which you, you might, might gingerly share with your husband or your wife, but no one else will get to hear about it. That's when you need uncommon courage that's when you need Jesus to come in and help you. How is God calling you, my dear friends, to have uncommon courage in some of these dark recesses in your heart? Maybe it's in, re in some relationships. Maybe it's in your workplace. Maybe it's in your private life. Maybe it's in your finances. Maybe it's in your health. I alluded earlier on, it could be in in your isolation, in your loneliness, in this period of isolation. I don't need to elaborate. You know of all people, you know where you need uncommon courage. You know exactly where you need Jesus to pour into those areas of your life where you desperately need courage. My dear friends, I want to remind you Courage is something that you take from the Lord. Take courage. Can we pray? Lord, after all is said and done, 
there's one thing that I just remember. You will never leave. You will never forsake me. And Father, I just pray that this reality will be so clear in every single person's mind. Lord, you will never leave. You will never forsake us. That gives me courage, Lord. I can do anything. It's not just head knowledge, Lord. It's, it's something which I believe. It's something that I experience. It's something that I will, I can do anything, Lord, because of you will never leave or forsake me, Lord. Such is your great love for me. Such is your great love for us. And so, Father, I just pray for every single person that's listened to these couple of words here this morning. Lord, we desperately need uncommon courage. Courage which, which comes from you, supernatural courage, Lord, which can only come through you. So, Father, I just submit myself. We submit ourselves to you, Lord, and to your plans and to your purposes. Lord, where we don't have faith, Father, just place faith in our lives. We want to just reach out and take that which you've made provision for us for, Lord, and to operate in. Lord, I pray that people will come into a relationship, that each one of us, Lord, will come into a deeper relationship, a deeper understanding with you. Lord, I don't want to be like those people on the shore that were watching something going down and did nothing about it. Father, I pray that you place in us an uncommon courage, that we will be able to respond and do uncommon acts of worship, Lord, for you. Lord, we have got a desire to see, to see you be glorified. We've got a, such a strong desire, Lord Jesus, to see you change communities, change nations, Lord. And Father, that's going to happen with uncommon courage. And so, Father, we just thank you for people that, are, that you've placed around us that just encourage us on a daily basis. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for encouraging us and being with us and strengthening in us on a daily basis. Lord, you be glorified. In your precious name, Lord. Amen. Amen. So, my dear friends, I encourage you. I encourage you. I fill you with courage because it's the, the joy, it's the peace, it's the strength of Jesus. It's the love of Jesus that I release you to walk in faith and victory and in full courage this week. Amen. Amen.